This is a review of the Evolution Track Stroke Circular Saw. It's the R185CCSX Plus. That's their top of the range saw. It doesn't come with any track. You have to buy the track separately. I bought the 1400mm track which comes in two 700mm lengths. The track comes in a nice bag. It comes with a couple of clamps. Um, so it's, it's not bad really. My only criticism about the track would be that splinter guard's quite hard plastic and both the T-tracks on the, on the track are downward facing so a lot of the accessories that you might get for more expensive tracks um, are unlikely to fit because they utilise the, the, the upwardly facing um, T-track which this doesn't have. The CCSX Plus has a few extra features over the R185 CCSX it comes with um, advanced dust collection, which basically means this adapter. To be honest, I found that the dust collection is pretty minimal. It's almost non-existent. You're going to get very, very dusty using this saw, and it's going to go everywhere. One of the other additional features it has is it has a longer power lead. That's not actually something I needed, but it came with it. So I guess that's quite useful for most people. It came with a lovely bag. There's the bag. It's very sturdy. It's got an open top which closes together. I would say the bag feels a little bit too small. It's quite difficult to close the top of the bag when you put the saw in it. Other than that, it's a very sturdy bag. Can't really complain about the bag other than it could do with being perhaps an inch or two taller. It comes with a multi-material blade, as do most Evolution saws. The blade that the Plus version comes with is supposedly a superior bl blade with more teeth. What I've found, I, I only would work. I'm not cutting anything else. The blade is very messy. It leaves saw marks in your wood and um, it leaves splinters and things. I replaced the blade on my Evolution Mitre saw for a Saxton blade, an 80 teeth wood, wood saw blade. That was far far superior to the evolution blade I would say um, so if you are only using it for woodwork consider getting a wood only blade the blade guard at the rear works well enough but um, you will find it quite annoying when you're using it with the track because when you're putting it on the track it does tend to um, snag and you have you're constantly having to lift it up every time you put it on the track so that it doesn't snag it also pushes down on the splinter guard and that then leaves splinter guard starting to peel at the end which isn't ideal that may be more user error than evolution's fault but i would say that actually using a circular saw on a track doesn't seem to be particularly ideal. I think perhaps a plunge saw would work better. One of the things I've found with the Evolution track saw is this knob which you turn to remove the play in the track. You have to check after every use or before every use because if you use it a couple of times you'll find that it's got play in it again, it moves so you then have to readjust it. That obviously adds time to each cut and whilst you can remove the play with the knob it's a bit disconcerting that you have to then readjust it on your next cut.
is an example of what I mean by having to adjust this every time you put the blade onto the track. Now, perhaps that's a common thing with track saws, um, but I would have thought you'd only need to adjust this once. I've literally just taken it off and put it back onto the bed. You can hear that movement. I can tighten it up and lose it, so it's not rocking now, but will it be rocking when I get to the end of the cut? So actually it's not wobbling at the end of the cut, which is a good thing I guess. Just if I take it off and put it back on. Well it's not wobbling now, but I'm sure if I take it off, put it down, put it back on. Yeah, it's wobbling again. See, so literally, just put, placing it on the floor, causing that problem. I readjusted the splinter guard last week so that it was well, I recut it basically so that it was touching the blade with everything else all trued up. I've come to use it today and there's a gap of about two millimetres between the blade and the splinter guard. This might give a better view of the gap between the blade and the splinter guard. Now, this here is about two mil thick. It's the end of the um, mitre gauge. Oh. And at least two millimeters if not three millimeters so you can't reliably use the splinter guard to line up the line you want to cut on what I think is happening is I must have used the saw without checking the play which I've shown you need to do every time you cut and as a result the saw has cut into the splinter guard this might be a rookie mistake but it also feels like something that a better design could avoid now I, I had this trued up and adjusted at exactly 90 degrees about two weeks ago and I haven't changed anything but it's now saying 91. I know that this is accurate and doesn't is reliable so I've now got to adjust underneath the two screws to get it back to 90. shouldn't need to do that after only a few cuts. I've made maybe a half a dozen cuts with the saw since it was trued up. So it's now 90 degrees. If I look at that cut I just made you can see that it's not actually square. It's out by enough for it not to be square. So I'm not going to say it's all a all the saws fault perhaps it is my technique using the saw but I don't think you can use it to get reliably square cuts this is what it looks like with the light on that's what it looks like with the light off now most of the time I can't actually tell you can tell when you turn it on and off but most of the time I can't actually tell that the light's on when I'm using it. Um, it's not a very bright light. 
I guess if you're working in a dark area it might be useful but you probably shouldn't be using a circular saw or a track saw in a dark area you should be using it somewhere that's reasonably well lit these are the graduations that show how deep your saw is now, the thing to know is that these make no sense at all if you're using it with the track I've got the blade so that it's literally just clearing an 18 mil board yet it says it's at 24 millimeters so these don't really mean anything they're only graduated at five millimeter steps as well and there's quite a big gap between the little arrow here which I've painted white to try and see better because it's very difficult to see and the um, the edge of the graduations so you get parallax, it's quite difficult to work out exactly where you are unless you're only worried about getting to the nearest five millimeters, which some people might be, but if you want to do um, a cut of a particular depth, you can't set it using this. You're going to have to take test cuts, measure the depth, try and adjust it manually until you get the depth that you want. You know, this is pretty useless. Finally, when the two tracks are screwed together, they don't run smoothly um, at the join. You can definitely hear and feel that a lot more resistance as you're going over that joint. Just make sure they're tight, or not tight, but make sure there's no play, which you have to do every time you use a saw. can hear no, I can't even move that back, I have to take it off. Let's try again. I'm moving it smoothly and now I've hit a block. It won't move. There's a slight I'll take this off basically slight ridges here and here and here now I've heard other people complain of this so I'm pretty sure it's not just me but effectively these extrusions aren't um, aren't perfect and I guess that's the compromise that you make when you pay a small amount of money for these extru extrusions versus say Festool ones which to be frank cost more than the saw so you know I can live with that but something you need to be aware of you probably if you want a 1400 millimeter, millimeter track you're probably better off getting the longer track the 2800 track so that you've got a single mm -hmm. length of the um, extrusion and then you probably won't have that problem just something to be aware of. So that's my review of this Evolution track come circular saw and I feel like I've given it a bit of a trashing and it is at odds with most of the other reviews you'll see on the internet of this track saw so um, I want to try and explain that a little bit. Uh, I've come at this from someone that's purchased this saw myself to use as a DIY enthusiast and I think the DIY market is a difficult market because we don't have very deep pockets so we are looking for budget tools but equally we're looking for those tools to help us um, deliver good results so getting a good 90 degree cut every time is really important what's less important is time um, so I am prepared to spend a little bit of time getting the cut right if it means that I get a good cut and a high quality cut unfortunately this tool doesn't do those things for me I can't reliably and accurately get a 90 degree cut the cuts that I get are of poor quality they show the blade marks and so on and 
Therefore, I don't think it's actually a very good tool for a DIYer. Um, it's certainly not a very good tool for a cabinet maker. I don't think they could use it at all. For someone working on a construction site who just wants to chop stuff up, um, perhaps you know, cutting OSB, then it, it might be fine. But for the DIY market, I'm not convinced it's the right tool for the job. However, I spent my money on this tool. I made my choice when I spent that money. And I will now continue to use this tool and you'll continue to see it in my videos because I'm not going to throw that money away and spend even more money on another tool. I will have to live with the decision that I made to buy this tool. So I hope it's been helpful for you. And if you are a DIYer, I don't think this is the tool for you. Um, look elsewhere. If you've enjoyed this video, then please leave a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.